us tonight has not only seen Fargo, he's actually played it. Please welcome the hardest working man in show business, the host of The Tonight Show, Jay Leno. Jay! About movies. See, that's my thing about the movies when you said about uh, buying drinks and things. Why would you buy a drink that is two quarts larger than your bladder in the first place? I mean, so you physically, you physically can't do anything with it. All right. <laughs> Don't write jokes All backstage. Right, so Go ahead. What's it, what's, where, where are we going? What's the first question? Uh, now, what do you uh, want to know? I want to ask you yes. because uh, I can't even get my head together yeah. for the interview. You do this every night. Have you ever fucked up like that? <laughs> no, not this bad. Actually. <laughs> No, this, plus, this is the first time, this is the first time I've ever been on a show where the host said, sh uh, shut your fat fuck mouth and said, thank you, and the audience went, yes! <laughs> well, I've winnowed my demographic down to a jaded little few. That's who, right. Who liked the sentence, shut your blathering pie hole, you fat fuck. Well, that's what it was, excuse me, that's what it was. Now, I know when I used to hang out with you, you, you'd, you wouldn't go to a lot of movies at the theater. You'd watch them at home. But I also know now... No, because you as... can't go to movies at theaters. Why is that? Because, because people don't watch movies. People are idiots. You know, you, go to, you, know you, sit in a theater, you sit in a movie theater, and there'll be people <laughs> sitting in front of you. And a guy in the screen will come in, take a gun out, shoot the other guy, and the people in front will go, hey, what happened? He just shot the guy. Are you an idiot? Don't you see what happened? People are morons. They talk on the <laughs> telephone. I was in a theater. This is true. I was in a multiplex. I'm sitting in the theater, and a guy's going, hey, Bill, how you doing? Good. Just watch this movie. And I, I, I went, shh, shh, keep it down. He shut up, man. He didn't even know that he was, it was rude to talk in the theater because they rent videos. They watch them at home. They talk at home. They think they're at home, except the screen is bigger. That's the only difference. That's the only difference. That would explain the masturbation thing, too. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you don't know which clicker you're working. Uh... <laughs> Plus, do you, do you, you think, think movies are getting worse in general? I think they're getting worse. You know, I think they're doing, I think they're back to the 1920s. I think they're making silent movies again that have sound in them. Because, you, no, no, you watch Volcano, you watch Twisted. Volcano, you, watch... you screwed it up, too! Volcano, Volcano. It's... Oh! You're oh, a bad influence. No, no, I saw Volcano in The Ghost in the Darkness. <laughs> he was great. <laughs> I have always said, it's Volcano, I realize I've always said Volcano. <laughs> but anyway, what I'm saying is, these are silent movies that just have noise in them. Can you, do you have to, all you hear are maybe street addresses or Hi Bill, or a catchphrase. But for the most part, movies are just silent films again for the vast majority of people that can't follow language. This is why when you see Speed 2, they spent $30 million for one scene. If they'd given half of that to a screenwriter, they could have had a script. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but you know, it is the marketplace. Who's to blame? Do you blame, do you blame the... I can't even blame the movie makers because the people seem to crave it, don't they? Well, it's economics. You can't hire ushers to keep people quiet in a theater anymore. So if you just make the movie loud enough, <laughs> then it doesn't matter if people are talking because you can't hear what they're saying anyway. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you watch movies, <laughs> boom, I got it! I got it! Does it matter if the guy in front of me is talking? Or talking? <laughs> difference. I can't hear anything anyway. <laughs> it's all economics. <laughs> And this is my favorite you know what I, tell, Leno, I, I tell you, you know what I watched the other night? You know what I watched the other night? I watched The Third Man. Do you ever see that oh, film, yeah, Orson Welles? Well. Here is a great movie. Is that with where the Heston's North. playing the bandito? No, no, not that one. No, What's no, that Third one? Man. This one takes place in Vienna after World War II. Oh, I don't know. You know it's, it's, a great, it's a great film, and Orson Welles is not directing it. He's just a character in it. But here's a movie that just kind of ends the way life ends. The chase scenes are the way real life chase scenes are. People, like, like did you see, um, oh, what was the last Val Kilmer movie? Saint. Saint. He runs down an alley, two guys, uh, runs in the alley, two seconds later comes out, he's an 80-year-old man, and he's got uh, prosthetics, and how does that happen? <laughs> and the audience accepts it. Oh, pretty good man. You know, <laughs> you watch th the third man, you see people run the way people really walk. They, 
they walk crisply and they, you know, they get out of breath and they stop. I mean, in real life, you know, in movies, everybody knows karate. Every clerk at 7-Eleven, every forest ranger. I saw the river. Do you ever see that one, the river? They run into the woman forest ranger. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> Where did she learn karate? She's a forest ranger. It doesn't make any sense. You know, these movies, people do things in movies that they don't do in real life. You see, I have a theory. I have, my theory is, Cities are so bad, all the stupid people go to movies because the smart people are afraid to go out. And the smart people say, tell me, tell me that NYPD Blue, ER, um, uh, well, what's the one, uh, Homicide. These Chicago are, Hope, great writing. These have more words in one hour. Larry than, Sanders show. Than most films do in two hours. Kissing a little HBO app. But it's true, it's true. <laughs> there are more words in one hour of this than there are in two and a half hours of most major motion pictures. And, and it makes sense. All the words follow. You have to hear the words to follow the story. When you go to the movies, now you don't have to know the words. They're nice. You know, you pick up the phrase, save the bunny, con air, hasta la vista, baby. You pick up the phrase, but they're not necessary to follow the story. All right, Jay, we got a phone call for you. Line eight. Yes. We've got Chris from Farmington, Missouri. Chris, show me. Hi, Jay. Hi, Dennis. How are you? What's going Hi. on? Hey, I just wanted to know your opinion on, uh, like sequels, like kind of like Die Hard, you know, how many times can the same guy get put in the same situation? And, you know, I Three. think it's kind of silly. <laughs> well, exactly. Have you ever seen anything that was, you know, it's the exact opposite of real life. Money does not improve movies. You can't make a comedy funnier by making the explosions bigger or the fancier. The only way you can make funnier is put more jumps in. You know, I saw Swingers. Here's a movie that cost $30,000 or, or something. No, no, I think it costs well, money. Well, all right, but uh, what I mean is, compared to most great movies, flick, uh, but a, a great movie, you know, I didn't care, oh, look, the lighting is bad. I didn't care that the window's really made of paper and it's going like this, because I'm fascinated by the words people are saying. Now, it, it's the whole other way around. You know, movies are now the equivalent of a, it's like a vibrating sex object. Technically, it's very good. There's just no soul or emotion to it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to put it in terms Dennis can understand. Wow. Now, follow wow. what I mean, does that make sense? I mean, when was the last time you were moved by a movie? The last time, you know, I remember seeing Rocky. I remember being, moving out to California, being down on my luck, going to see Rocky, and really feeling, I came out of the movie feeling good. You know, I mean. You were still getting stoned then, right? Yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, it, I mean. No, you don't get high. Don't start that. No, but you know that what I'm the saying. The only guy I know. No, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, when was the last time you went to a movie and felt like it really raised your spirit? Rocky Five. Rocky Five. <laughs> when he beat the Russian, Kate. my life was complete. <laughs> but you know what's funny about you? I know that you love the shittiest movies. Remember, we used I to watch Plan movie. 9 from Outer See, Space. This is why. And Jay had a teacher's pointer, and he would literally freeze frame the thing and go over. Here you can see the this alien spacecraft why... has a calendar on the wall. <laughs> this is why. No, this is why I think nuclear accidents can happen. I went to see Showgirls. Here's a movie that had. No, no. It, it cost a lot of money. It had a couple of big stars. It had technical. And it was hard. Now, there's the best people in our business doing that. Why could a nuclear accident happen the same way? How did all these bad factors come into play at one time? You watch that and you go, what happened? Well, listen, as sweet as a kid as she might be, Elizabeth Berkeley is not the best person in our business. Meryl Street, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. I'm just saying, I can see where that happens. They get a kid in there, she's been on Saved by the Bell. But it's she's not her fault. Track. When, you, when you're hitching in there, and you, they go, no, no, take, when take any movie, off. when you're hitching to Vegas and the first scene you're picked up by an Elvis impersonator, Bad movie. Yeah. Oh. Forget Leave that. now. Get out! Get out! No, forget that. Ro the best line in that movie is when Robert Davi looks at her after she's left and gone to that production. He goes, it must be great to have a job where people don't come on you. <laughs> <laughs> I want a T-shirt with that on. Jay Leno, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you,